Welcome to chapter four. In this chapter, I'm going to discuss uh, the next synth in the lineup called Form. Form is designed to uh, explore some of the fun possibilities when using uh, FM operators and filters in series. And so Form allows you to do some, some very interesting things um, with, with uh, formant filter in series between um, three uh, FM operators. Okay, so let me uh, first of all step through the presets so you can hear what this sounds like. This is uh, preset one, horn one. Preset two, horn two. Preset three, excuse me. Preset three, horn three. Preset four, which is horn four. Horn 5, Horn 6, Horn 7, Synth 1, Synth 2, and Synth 3. Okay, so let's explore now uh, how this is actually constructed. So we'll hit the edit button here and go to the AUG page and I'll step through the layers real quick. Okay, so there are three layers that are involved in making this sound. Uh, layer number one contains our um, first two uh, FM operators. We have a sopless shape here, which is operator one, gain going into sopless shape two. And then that goes into wrap so that you can add uh, even more harmonics and do some other fun things with the sound uh, after it comes out of the uh, first two uh, FM uh, operators. Okay, so on layer two we have two bandpass filters and these are our formant filters because you can adjust both the width and the uh, center frequency for each of these filters. They have a um, uh, different ranges but they overlap in the middle uh, so, so you can um, create a wide variety of uh, response curves and, and many wind instruments actually have maybe two, one or two main formants. So if you can nail those formant frequencies and, and, and uh, get the width right and get the frequency right, you can, you can get pretty close to creating uh, sounds that, that correspond to real world instruments. Okay, so let's go then up to layer three. Uh, this is the final layer. So we mix the, um, uh, the bandpass filters. Now those are operating in parallel. So uh, you have um, uh, the signal goes through both of those in parallel and then gets mixed back together again. Uh, then you have another gain block going into a final FM operator. Okay, so uh, in the next part, what we're going to discuss is how to use this to create your own sounds. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about how to create your own sounds uh, using form. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to uh, start by zeroing out all the sliders, and I'm going to make sure SW is off, mod wheel is all the way down. Mod wheel is not actually uh, wired to anything in this. Uh, I did that on purpose because there are, um, are various different destinations and things that you might want to modulate depending on, on uh, what you plan on using uh, this program for. For instance, this is a, a very good program to use if you have a breath controller. And slider G specifically is going to be um, a great destination for uh, breath control for uh, the velocity that you're blowing. And I'll show you uh, why uh, in a few minutes as we go through the sliders here. So uh, let's play this, of course, first of all, with the sliders all zeroed out. And we have a sound like this. Okay, so even though we have all of these uh, FM operators uh, in the mix, we have this very sort of uh, sine wave-ish tone because um, both of the filters uh, have are, are, are essentially closed in as much as you can have a bandpass filter that's closed. The uh, width of each frequency band is set to the minimum amount, and the uh, the 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 um, uh, the frequencies for each of these is turned all the way down. So. So, so you get this very basic sort of sound. Um, I'm going to start, uh, first of all, with um, slider H. So slider H determines your attack time, which I found was um, 
when you're doing horn sounds, um, and, and that's really what form is good at, the attack time is, most of the time, that's, that's the main thing you're interested in. So that's on slider H, okay? Now, I mentioned before slider G, so let me, uh, uh, first of all, I'm just going to play with slider G without adding anything else into the mix, okay? Because this controls the volume, again, of this uh, arrangement of stuff that's going into the final FM operator. So can you hear how the, uh, the sound gets sharper and gets more harmonics? But those harmonics... Are, are related to uh, the these these frequencies here that because you're applying these bandpass this bandpass filter uh, set in parallel, they're going to kind of control how this FM operator responds to what's coming before it, um, and so in that way you can get frequencies out of this and emphasize frequencies that are going to sound more natural because they're going to be already related to the um, to the, the 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 fundamental sound of your horn so to speak. Okay, so we'll, we'll play with that some more later. Let's go ahead and start back over here with slider A and go through them in sequence. So slider A controls the gain going from um, your first uh, FM operator into the second FM operator. Okay, so slider B controls wrap. Now you're not going to really hear much of what these do yet because I haven't really opened up the, uh, the, the filters, the bandpass filters. So let me do that right now. So sliders C and E control frequency, and sliders D and F control uh, the width of these filters, respectively. So I'll open them all the way up, turn this all the way down, so you can hear that's closed, that's open. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, raise slider A again. Now you can hear more of its effect, and now let's do slider B. Okay, um, one detail I want to point out here with the wrap amount that's on slider C. Um, if you go to the DSP mod page, I'm going to go there now myself, it's actually set to one decibel. Okay, I've, I, I know from experience more or less where wrap kicks in. It's right around minus 30 dB uh, when you have it in a signal chain. And so uh, what I found is that oftentimes with wrap, you can use it as a very... Not, not necessarily subtle, but you get a very nice continuous control over uh, the effect it has when you use very small amounts of it. So in this case, I'm using, uh, oh, it's only one decibel that you're controlling of wrap, but you get a, a wide a range of effects that could be useful. Okay, so... Um, Turn off that switch button. Oh, I know what happened. Okay, let me zero out the sliders again. Unfortunately, when you hit edit and you come out of edit, your uh, patch gets reinitialized. So, okay, there we go. Because, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to open up the filters all the way. We're going to start adding in some of this stuff. Okay, so, so that's your basic arrangement. So, um, if you're trying to think about this in terms of how to synthesize horns, You'll probably want to think of these two as controlling the basic sort of brassiness or roundness of the instrument that you want to emulate. With more rap, you're going to get a sharper sound, you're going to get more of that brassy quality. And with less rap, you're going to get a, uh, a more mellow quality. Okay, so now it's uh, mostly a matter of setting these width controls. Like if you set them fairly narrow and do something like this, you get a very thin sound because you have a very narrow band that's at high frequency and a very narrow band that's at a lower frequency being passed through. Okay, so now let's, um, uh, let's set this up real quick for something that I'm going to just adjust these by ear for a second and find a sound that sounds relatively like a horn.
So as, as you hear, um, as I'm playing and I apply slider G, you can hear the effect that has on this sound by bringing in more of those uh, harmonics that are uh, related to uh, basically your formant filter frequencies. And that can be very expressive. Let me show you, uh, I'm going to shoot forward here uh, in my preset list to horn 5 and I'm going to move slider G as I play a little bit. And that's before you add in things like pitch bending and everything else. So you can see how slider G can be very useful as a modulation source. So you could, for instance, instead of using slider G as a modification for this, you could assign the mod wheel. Um, and, and, and so you could do all sorts of things. Now let me just show you real quick what the effects are that we have assigned to this program. Slider I controls reverb amount. And that reverb also has some delay on it. Okay, and this SW button over here, this engages a uh, distortion, so you can add distortion onto your horn. And that can actually be useful uh, as, as another sort of expressive thing. For instance, if you wanted to um, get deep into the programming and go into the effect chain and change this to the mod wheel, you could add sort of that more growly quality that, that um, you know, but, but it, it has much more of a mid-range emphasis too uh, when you kick on this particular distortion. Okay, so uh, that's it for this tour of uh, form. And hopefully when you get this, you can play around with it and find some sounds that are useful for your purposes. And in the next chapter, we will talk about the model that is called BAD.